Evropska nedelja mogućnosti završena je događajem u Nišu i bila je to prilika da građani saznaju na koji način Evropska unija podržava njihove ideje i kako mogu da ih pretoče u delu. Utiske će nam danas preneti šef delegacije Evropske unije u Srbiji, ambasador gospodin Emanuele Žiofre i on će nam reći i malo više o tome šta Evropska unija zapravo znači Srbiji, a šta Srbija znači Evropskoj uniji i govorit ćemo na kraju malo i o trenutnom stanju demokratije i političkom trenutku u Srbiji iz vizure Evropske unije. Dear ambasador, welcome to Niš and to Južne Vesti and thank you for your time for this interview. Thank you for having me today. Um, for the beginning, uh, I said that the European Week of uh, Opportunities ended uh, today in Niš. Uh, uh, it was uh, uh, some events that uh, uh, people could uh, find out everything they were uh, interested about uh, EU accession funds and how they can, can uh, implement their ideas uh, uh, through series of events. E, uh, and can you tell us uh, uh, what's the impressions of this week? I think it's a very good impression. Uh, we had uh, many events uh, uh, in Belgrade, but also in uh, Novi Sad and here in Niche today. A lot of people came uh, and I think it was good to show uh, to various uh, people, uh, students, uh, farmers, uh, innovators, communities, local authorities, how many opportunities exist. So Opportunity Week is over, but opportunities continue. And what was important was actually to present them. Uh, and uh, it was, uh, I think, a very important moment to bring together all these various programs and shows that the European Union uh, is about uh, real change in the life of individuals. It's not only about the state and the country. It's also about this. It's, it's not only about big infrastructure. It's about uh, small things that can really make a big difference in the life of someone. If you are a small and medium enterprise, you have a small business and need, you need to buy a truck, for example. Mm -hmm. We have a program for this and, and you can apply. If you're a student and you want to go and study in Spain for six months, you can apply via Erasmus+. Mm -hmm. If you are an innovator, you have a bright idea, you want to uh, experiment and test your ideas, you can apply uh, to your funding via the uh, Innovation Fund. Uh, if you're a farmer and uh, you have your plot of land and uh, you need, for example, a couple of solar panels to make it more efficient or some machines, you can apply via uh, iPart. So there's an opportunity almost for everyone. And this week has allowed us to do it. And today in Niche, it was about cross-border cooperation. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that opportunities don't stop at the border because the borders for the European Union are also a, a source of cooperation. So today we had the, the signature between North Macedonia and Serbia. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us more about, about this, uh, that, you, uh, that agreement you signed today? Uh, it's about uh, Pčinj and Jablanica uh, district, right? And yes. uh, what do, does it mean uh, to people of, of these uh, districts? Yes, all the districts of southern Serbia uh, and uh, in the north of North Macedonia, they are, will be able to apply for coal to cooperate uh, in a number of areas. This specific coal will cover uh, sustainable tourism, mm -hmm. uh, inclusive uh, 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 social inclusion and cultural inclusion and health. Mm -hmm. So any ideas that you have uh, to, uh, to cooperate with the community across the border will be supported, uh, you can present it, and there will be a, a, an examination of your ideas, and you can receive funding. This specific signature today is about 3.6 million euros. Uh, it's, part, it's about 40% of the overall budget, so there will be more signature in the future. A and this is really for people, uh, for associations, for individuals, for local uh, community. And we have programs like this also with Bulgaria, we have programs like this also with uh, Hungary, Romania, uh, Croatia, but also Bosnia, Montenegro, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, and therefore, uh, here it's really the possibility for, for citizens' association to actually develop their ideas and, and move on. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, some impression that we have uh, in this region uh, specifically is that uh, citizens often ask uh, 
uh, what will the European Union do for us. Uh, I think that this week uh, in some way uh, uh, answered that question. But uh, could you uh, give the, them a, a brief, brief answer to that? You uh, said something. But uh, briefly and di directly uh, uh, ask, uh, answer the question, what will European Union f do for us? Yeah, what we're doing already uh, is, uh, for example, for the citizens of Nish, is to fund the building of the railway between Belgrade and Nish mm -hmm. so that people can travel very quickly to the capital and back. And this is good for business, it's good for individuals, it's good for, it's good for students. We are uh, funding the, the uh, uh, wastewater uh, treatment plant for Nish because uh, the citizens of Nish deserve better water quality. Uh, we're funding the interconnector of gas so that uh, the companies in Nish and in the areas will be able to function with natural gas, which is cheaper. So these are big infrastructure. And then we have uh, uh, the smaller projects that are actually there for individual citizens, the farmers, the innovators, uh, the students, the researchers, etc. So there is something for everyone already now. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I think that uh, now it's uh, clearer uh, what the EU means to, to Serbia. And can you tell us what uh, Serbia means to the European Union? Well, Serbia means a lot. Uh, Serbia is a country that can actually also bring a lot of opportunities to the European Union. Uh, this is a, a resilient economy. The Serbian people are very hardworking, determined, uh, and you're part of our uh, European family. Uh, Serbia is part and parcel of our history, of our culture, our common cultural heritage. And therefore, in order to complete Europe, we need also the Western Balkans, including Serbia. Mm -hmm. Uh, you mentioned uh, one of my questions uh, was uh, uh, just that uh, a railway between Belgrade and Nish. Uh, can you tell us something uh, uh, more? What is the current situation in this regard? Uh, is this uh, realization going uh, according to plan? So this is a huge project. Uh, obviously, uh, the European Union uh, will invest uh, 2.2 billion euros uh, in this pro project. 600 million euros, uh, up to 600 million euros of grants, donations, and the rest will be loans from the EAB, EBRD. It's not an easy project because the terrain is not easy. Uh, of course, you need to receive all the permit and authorizations, but we are advancing. Uh, we have already uh, adopted uh, two of the four sections of this uh, um, uh, line, uh, adopted meaning that the funds have been made available. And we're working very closely with the Ministry of Infrastructures in order to advance uh, the, the project. It will take some time, but it will work and we will see soon result. Can you tell us uh, uh, some uh, year that we uh, could see a first results uh, about uh, this railway? But it's, uh, as I said, it's, it's divided in, in four sections. So the first results, uh, uh, it should be uh, on, on the first sections, uh, the Nish Prestovac, which is already the works are on. Uh, we uh, we have to overcome uh, all the uh, legal and uh, regulatory uh, issues that are there, but uh, we're working uh, very steadily, uh, and uh, we uh, are, have been uh, creating a working group with the Ministry of Infrastructure and and the Serbian Railways in order to accelerate. So I hope that in a couple of years we will see uh, the this line uh, up and running. Mm -hmm. Uh, you you tell me before uh, the show that uh, it's not your first time in Nish, but uh, it's like uh, it's your first time in Nish because you you your it's your first time that you visit some uh, historical uh, monuments in the city, right? What else uh, uh, you see today? Okay, so what's to the, impressions? Yes, uh, it is true that it's not my first time in Nish. I came uh, several times, but this is the first time I devoted my visit only to the city of Nish. Uh, and I had uh, the opportunity to see uh, the mayor this morning. We went to see uh, this beautiful uh, Roman villa at uh, Mediana that uh, there's a beautiful archaeological park. Uh, and I had the opportunity to discuss with uh, the director of the park together with the Minister of European Integration, Tanya Miscevic. And uh, this is a bit of a passion of mine, archaeology, so I found it very interesting and in discovering that uh, uh, the Emperor Constantine the Great uh, was born here, I, which I discovered when I arrived in, in Serbia. Uh, it's uh, extremely inspiring. And then I went to the cardiovascular clinic here in, uh, in uh, Nish. Uh, I spoke with the director and the staff, uh, and I visited the, 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 the clinic, uh, very interesting. 
And there's, there are many other things that I need to do here in, uh, in Nish, so I need to come back soon uh, in order to continue exploring this beautiful city. Okay, uh, now I, I would like to ask you uh, uh, to, to tell us some impressions and comment on the protests uh, that have been going on in Belgrade for weeks and after that uh, uh, we have recently a protest spreading to the rest of Serbia. Do you think uh, that uh, government in Serbia is properly answering uh, to this uh, disconnect the citizens are showing on the streets? What's your impressions? Well, you know, for, for the European Union, uh, freedom of uh, expression uh, is a fundamental value. So it's important that uh, the citizens are free to demonstrate uh, without hindrance. And this is what has happened so far. And we, 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 we hope that this will continue. And this is an important aspect. Uh, the, the issue of uh, the reforms in the area of the rule of law and the media uh, and uh, strengthening democratic institutions is uh, part of the uh, enlargement process of Serbia and actually it's one of an important part and we call it the fundamentals in the negotiations. Uh, we have been uh, working uh, with the government uh, and uh, all stakeholders in order to promote the reforms in this specific sector because this is really what can bring forward the, uh, the process. Uh, including in the media sector, uh, we have been uh, uh, supporting the drafting of what is called the media strategy that was adopted by the government and the media action plan. And we think it's important now that these documents are translated into legislation, uh, effective legislation which is effectively implemented. And now, uh, how you you, uh, what, what do you think now? Uh, what's the situa situation now? Well, at the moment, obviously, there is a lot of uh, discontent uh, that uh, in, in the streets, uh, the country is still under shock from what has happened at the beginning of May. It's not only the country. I think uh, everyone mm -hmm. was deeply shaken by uh, the mass shootings that took place uh, uh, in Belgrade at the um, uh, Ridnika school mm -hmm. and uh, in South Belgrade. Um, it's important that uh, we uh, are able to articulate uh, this uh, um, grievances and solutions are taken uh, for for the, the root causes, uh, and uh, we we've been also working with the government uh, for the collections of weapons. So we have been funding uh, a campaign together with the OEC to collect weapons. This is part of the of the issue that are, are been uh, part of the problems, uh, and uh, we you know when it comes to the European Union, for us it's important that. Uh, um, the, the issue of the accession and membership of Serbia to the European Union is an issue that the, um, is an uh, object of a, of a debate between political forces. Uh, because even if uh, full uh, uh, consensus is sometimes difficult to achieve, there will be always uh, someone that rightly or wrongly think that it's not uh, in the interest of Serbia. But I think there should be a, a uh, cross-party uh, understanding and I have to say that I was extremely pleased that uh, uh, during the Opportunity Week, we, we also had the opportunity to have a panel uh, gathering civil society, uh, government representative and opposition representative, as well as uh, my colleague from uh, the, the Ambassador of Sweden, to discuss precisely this. Meaning that you need to be able to create uh, a space for dialogue, uh, genuine dialogue uh, that allow different political forces to confront themselves in order to, to move forward. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have to ask you this, uh, uh, do you have idea how to restore peace uh, to the citizens of uh, north of Kosovo and Metohia where tensions have not succeeded even after the talks in Brussels we have uh, last week? Yes, this is uh, a, an issue that uh, of course uh, concerns us very much. Uh, we've seen uh, a lot of tensions uh, and escalations that uh, has uh, characterized the situation. We had uh, uh, crisis talks uh, last week uh, in Brussels, uh, chaired by the High Representative Joseph Borrell with uh, Prime Minister Kurti and President Vucic. And unfortunately, after that uh, meeting, instead of uh, seeing the tensions going down, we've seen more, uh, more steps towards escalation. So we need to change. Uh, we need to change the dynamic. Uh, we need to return to uh, normalization talks uh, that are facilitated by the European Union. We have now uh, a plan uh, 
towards normalization and we need to, to go there, back there, in particular and uh, starting with uh, the establishment of the Association of Serbian Municipality. Mm -hmm. But in order to do this, we need now to lower the tension. The European Union has presented uh, a plan which foresees uh, the departure of the special forces, uh, uh, special police forces from the fourth northern municipality, the end of the demonstrations, the mayor should go and work outside the municipal buildings, and new elections should be called with the participations mm -hmm. of, uh, of, the, of, of everyone, uh, including the, the Serbian majority in northern Kosovo. This is how we see. Today we have uh, um, uh, welcomed the fact that the, the three uh, policemen that were uh, detained in, uh, three Kosovo policemen were detained in Serbia have been released. Uh, and uh, we hope to be able to see more steps in that direction so that we can actually implement the specific plan, which is uh, the, supported by all member states of the European Union. And the situation at the moment is uh, 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 at the attention of everyone. Today, as we speak in Brussels, there is a uh, Council of Ministers of Foreign Affairs of all member states of the European Union, and this issue is on the agenda. When you uh, expect some uh, going back to dialogue? Well, we, 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 want to, we want the return of dialogue as soon as possible. This is really in the interest of everyone. It's important that we're able to, do, to return to the, to the discussion table to discuss how to improve the lives of, of the citizens of the region, mm -hmm. of northern Kosovo, of Kosovo, of, of this part of Serbia. So this is really important that we do it quickly. Uh, of course, it does require uh, cooperations of all sides, and it's important that we avoid taking any, any steps that can increase the tensions, and actually we take steps to decrease tensions, uh, to uh, avoid uh, unilateral acts, uh, to allow um, normal relationship to continue, uh, both in terms of movement of people and trade, and then go back and start implementing the plan that was agreed. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, is that situation in Kosovo the only reason that Serbia is somehow stagnating in uh, its European integration? And what else uh, do you think uh, it's important for our European path besides these calming tensions and going back to dialogue? Well, the, the, the negotiating framework that we agreed with Serbia uh, when we started the negotiations is very clear. Certainly the pace of normalization with Serbia, with uh, Kosovo is an important part, but mm -hmm. also what I mentioned before, the fundamentals, uh, so progress in the rule of law, the fight against corruption, the fight against organized crime, media freedom, this is a Im very important part of, of the negotiations and uh, therefore the reforms, if the reforms are, are faster, certainly Serbia can move faster. It is also true that uh, following the, the Russian aggression against Ukraine, the importance of foreign policy has increased. It was always in the uh, negotiating framework that uh, Serbia will align progressively its uh, foreign policy with what we call the European Union Common Foreign Security Policy. And now we are living in a, in a very specific situation uh, where foreign policy, geopolitics have become central because this has become a vital uh, issues for all member states. And so this is also something that uh, has, has increased tremendously of its importance. But also I would say it, is, uh, it has created a, a real opportunity for Serbia and for all the Western Balkans because enlargement uh, in general is back on the agenda in Brussels. Member states, uh, uh, the European Union institutions understand better than ever how important it is to uh, accelerate this process and bring the Western Balkans as part of the European Union family. And this is why uh, it's important that uh, we seize this opportunity and reforms in the rule of law are accelerated, that uh, there is uh, an even more commitment to normalize relations with, uh, with Pristina and we move in general towards harmonizing all policies, including foreign policy with the European Union policies. Uh, thank you uh, very much. We expect you uh, after summer break uh, back in Niš. With you. pleasure. With pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, vi ste gledali emisiju 15 minuta. Moje ime je Jovana Stojanović.